there's a lot of things that a landowner can do to improve wildlife habitat on their property. And one of the first things you have to do is identify what type of species you're hoping to improve. And on our woodlot, one of the things that, or one of the species that we try and focus our efforts on is uh, the ruffed grouse or partridge as it's commonly referred to in Nova Scotia. And there's a lot of things that you can do that really improve rough grouse habitat. So grouse really like and prefer a combination of large trees for roosting and cover during adverse weather events. But they also depend on new growth. New growth provides cover when they're foraging on the ground. It provides food for them. Here we have a, an alder, which has its buds on it. That's good feed for grouse this time of year. You'll often see them perched up in the evening, gorging themselves uh, before sunset. And through the fall, wild apple trees and crab apples provide a very important source of food for, for deer and grouse. And we can go into these areas where wild apple trees exist and through pruning and clearing around them, we can improve the yields each year. So this particular tree I'm at now was pruned about 10 years ago and it is well overdue for some pruning. It's got dead twigs on it. So we're gonna go in there very shortly and we're gonna start pruning off the dead the dead branches, clearing off the lower branches to facilitate airflow that prevents disease and prevents frost damage in the spring. And it should be noted that all of these little trees around me, these little saplings are shoots or suckers from trees that we cut down probably five or six years ago. And what you're trying to do is increase the stem count on your land. And you don't want, this isn't a, a tree for crop production, so you don't want to have a mulched bare surface under it. You're better off having some sort of dense vegetation that grouse can go underneath, they can peck around, find bugs, eat apples, without having to worry about some sort of a predator like a hawk or a weasel easily seeing them and uh, becoming part of the food cycle. So here you can see the apple tree I was just at. All of the, this new vegetation that's coming up underneath it is the result of a little bit of clearing work we did a number of years ago. There was choke cherries and larger alders. So we, we cut those and we didn't cut them all at once. Yeah, cut some one year, cut some the next. You kind of want to stagger it. And what you get is this dense understory. Lots of uh, food and cover for partridge. Some more buds and it's also important to leave roosting habitat and these big white spruce are a perfect tree species for doing that and they also provide some overhead cover some refuge during windy storms so you want to make sure that you leave these little patches intact if you're hoping to improve the partridge habitat on your property if your woodlot or the particular piece of ground you're working or trying to improve gross habitat on it's difficult to walk through chances are you're doing things right so i guess i just want to reiterate that improving gross habitat usually means improving deer habitat songbird habitat and all sorts of other things it's easy to do you don't need much equipment and it's something that you can replicate throughout your woodlot. And frankly, it's something that we should be doing a lot more of. So with very little equipment, you don't even need a spacing saw really to do this. Just a hand saw and a little bit of sweat and elbow grease. And you can make a difference on your property and improve the holding capacity of partridge uh, quite easily. And it works. We've seen lots of partridge around here this year. And uh, they seem to be doing quite well. <laughs>